Tonagachi Build Series Part 3, we're going to cover what you actually do with all those PCAP files in your Handshakes folder. We'll cover basic techniques to extract the data from them. Don't forget, once you get your Ponagachi online, to send me a pawn mail so you can get entered into the contest giveaway that we're having. Also, be sure to click subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications of our next video in the Ponagachi series and keep up to date on the contest. We need to start with a disclaimer. This video content has been made available for information and educational purposes only. All examples were performed in a lab environment. Fat Man Makes cannot be held liable for the legalities of performing these tasks on equipment other than your own. Okay, so today we're going to look at what you do with the PCAP files after you get them from your Ponagachi. So first thing we're going to do is a quick backup of the Handshakes folder and then we'll copy that over to our desktop environment and we can work on it from there. sudo su to go into root and then we want to run so tar dash zcvf handshakes.gzip and that's the name of the file we're creating and we're going to zip this folder backslash root backslash handshake so we'll hit enter and you can see it's adding all the files to zip and ls here we can see now we have handshakes.gzip here you need to install win scp or use some other type of scp program to extract it this is just easier for a lot of people standard install there'll be a link in the description next 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 when it opens up, we are going to specify the IP address of 10.0.0.2, which is your Ponagachi. The user is Pi. Uh, we can save this here. So log in and say yes. Password. So we can see right here, um, this is what's on your Gachi and this is your local desktop over here so we want to take handshakes and transfer it over close the program and disconnect we now need to extract the file but that's going to require an application like winrar or 7-zip to extract we'll right click select 7-zip and then open archive in this archive we have this item called handshakes We'll pull that out and rename it to handshakes.tar. Right click, 7-zip, open archive. And we can see here's the full folder structure from your Gachi. So we'll just drill down to handshakes and extract that folder out. That folder contains all the handshakes that your Gachi has. You just need to extract them. I've already done that. I've created a a folder here called hashcat and I have extracted some test files we now need to download hashcat links in the description we're gonna download the binary one last thing we need to do is we need to download a dictionary file so the rock file is fairly common so we're just going to download that and again links will be in the description okay so here's the rock file we're just gonna open it and then we're going to extract this again to C colon hash cat. And also we're gonna need the utilities for hash cat utilities so we can download that file. And then if we look in the downloads folder, right click, open with seven zip, open archive. And then we should be able to extract this whole folder to our working directory. We go back to downloads, hashcat utilities, again, 7-zip open archive, and we can extract this to the same 
folder location, C colon hashcat, and okay to extract. And if we take a look at that folder, we can see there's the utilities and I'm just going to copy this cap2hccapx.exe file and put it in the root of that hashcat folder. So we're just gonna clean this up a little, create a new folder, call it miscellaneous, and we can move all of these command and hash example files and any of these bin files. So the bin files are used for Unix and Mac, Mac machines. So we'll just cut all that and paste it into the miscellaneous folder. And we'll also take this hashcat 32 because we're not going to be using that. This is a 64 bit system. And we'll rename this to just hashcat. So we'll open the command prompt as an administrator. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is convert the file. So we're going to call the cap2hccapx.exe. We're going to give it the file we want to convert, which is fmm dash lab and tab over to fill it in and we're just going to call this fmlab1.ccapx okay so we can see that we have 36 handshakes to work with and now we want to run a simple dictionary attack using hashcat so we're going to call hashcat.exe we're going to specify a couple parameters dash m 2500 space um, the name of the file that we want which is this and then we're going to specify the dictionary which is rock you and we'll hit enter and it will initialize the runtime environment and it'll start running and we can hit S for a status it tells us where it's at we can check again so it's estimating that it's going to take a little over two minutes and we can just hit S every once in a while to get an update so we can see this is what it's looking at now and that it's about 33% done. We can see it just changes status and shows that it is now cracked. And if we look up here, we can see the SSID and the password. After we ran the crack and it was successful, uh, by default, the contents are saved in this hashcat.pot file. So if we look at that, we can see here's all the hashes. And right here, it shows the wireless name and the wireless password. So obviously, all of these handshakes were all from the same network. So the password is the same on all. So that was a standard dictionary attack and we saw it took about a minute and a half or two minutes to run through that dictionary file. So our next option is to get a little more use out of those dictionary files. You can run a rule against them. So we can specify the rules here by doing a dash R and then the location of the rules. So this is rules is a folder forward slash and then the rule name which is best 64.rule and then we see where we have the hash file and then the rocku.txt which is going to be our dictionary
So let's kick that off. And it's going to take two and a half, almost three hours. It's running the Rock U dictionary file. And then we're running this best 64 rules file. And again, the rules basically apply changes to the dictionary file so it could make it uppercase or lowercase. It can add text to the beginning or the end, append numbers, uh, special character, swap out letter, a character for a letter, etc. Uh, it all depends on what specifically the rule says, but there's any number of rules and you can write your own. All right, so I think this is gonna wrap up this video here. Uh, I just wanted to do a shout out to the first couple entries that I've got for the contest. Um, obviously, a Roland Deshane was the very first entry, but that is my second Ponagachi. Demon Llama was the first actual entry that I got from one of you guys out there, and his second entry was Gray Mana Cat. And after that, I had Amayagachi and then Ponix. And finally, Tytex Friend. Clearly, I'm not one for names because I just butchered all of them. I just wanted to thank everybody for their entries. And for those of you still thinking about it, go out and buy your hardware and get making a Ponagachi.